um, waiting for him to feed her sometimes. She thinks he's her boyfriend. So it's a love triangle that goes on quite a few times. And if you can see in the very, very back, the baby is hiding, the baby cursed out. But yeah, it's just very hard to see him. Now we have lots of uh, different birds in here, but there's also lots of birds that are gonna be flying over us. And they've been flying over us all through May and part of June. So this is the bird migration. So for the bird migration, there's lots of things that you can do in order to help these birds get to the way where they're going. You want to make sure not to have your lights on from 11, 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. This way it just keeps them not from being distracted and they can get to their location easier. Other ways you can really help is because these guys are going to be flying all over just to get to their location and that's a lot of a lot of effort and so they need time to rest so if you can put out bird feeders or you can put out uh, water baths I know they would really enjoy taking a break and if you are able to you can even put up plants like native plants that are going to have more bugs in those areas so they can feast on those bugs that it's going to bring. Now as we're going over here you can see some more of our ducks we got a comb duck right there the one with the foam nostril right there and he's got a white belly. Those are both males. We also got our ibis in the back with a long nose, a long beak. And we have our wood storks onto the side. They're the really, really tall ones. Now the ibis, we've been training them to come on over to get a little closer to us. Right now they're probably just a little scared because we have a few more people in here than we usually do. We'll see if they want some pinkies. <laughs> it's one of their absolute favorite things to eat. And it's got lots of nutrition in these. He's thinking about it. try tossing them some fish while we're waiting for the ibis over here. See if maybe they'll come on over. Up there is the fledgling or pendula as well. We actually have our green arpinolas up in the sky right now, so they're out on the branches. We have two, one fledgling out right now. This is actually one of our first fledglings we've had in this aviary. So it's been a difficult process, but these guys will make their nest into this um, hanging nest out on the tree. So you can see them over here. So they build that all by themselves. We do not help at all. They have their eggs set up in there. And had successful fledging until this year. So if you come to the aviary, you'll be able to see our fledgling running around or flying around, um, being fed by his parents. He makes a little baby noise. So sometimes you can hear it's a little distinct compared to the other orpindolas. Like everyone's a little too scared to come up a little closer to us today. Yeah, both of those wood storks were rescues, so they were wild born, and due to an injury, we had to uh, get them here. So they're both a little bit more skittish around people than maybe some of the birds who were kind of hatched at zoos or aquariums. Um, 
So we kind of try to give them space when we can. Like Kira said, they might just be a little bit more freaked out just because there's a couple more people in here. Yeah, if anyone has any questions, please let us know. We'd love to tell you guys even more about these birds if, if we can. And kind of a fun fact about our southern lapwings as well. So these two are actually brother and sister. Their names are Lizzie and Earl. They were actually the first uh, animals born after the zoo celebrated its centennial last year. Um, so they are named after the first bison that the zoo had, some of the first animals that were here. Oh, we have one wood stork coming a little bit closer, maybe for that fish, yep. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> Tried. <laughs> Oh, we went for the other one. Yeah, we got a variety of different birds in here that eat a variety of different diets. Um, how do we keep them from eating the diets of other birds? It's very difficult. <laughs> uh, so we try our best, but most of the time, everyone's gonna get a little bit of everything. But we definitely have some birds that are gonna be more fish diets, like the ibis and the storks over there. Some are gonna rely more on like a protein from bugs, such as like the ducks and I know the swamp hens. Or the southern lap wings. wings. This is a pair of red shovelers over here. Yeah, so these are another pair of our ducks, the red shovelers. And you can see the baby curse out a little bit better now. He's still <laughs> kind of tucked up in there. <laughs> yeah, the Waddle Curacao chick is very exciting because it's the uh, the first Waddle Curacao hatch at an uh, AZA zoo in over eight years and the first parent raised one in over, I think, 20 years. So we're very excited to have that here. And for anyone who's just joining, uh, just letting you know, this is the savanna aviary that we're in right now. We're just looking at some of the birds in the aviary. They can definitely come by and see on your own. We have the baby curacao, and we also have a fledgling from the orpendulas, both first for the zoo, so we're really excited. Lots of birds are also flying above us. So uh, the bird migration has started um, in May and it's going to be going on until around June 15th. So in order to help them out, we want to make sure they get to their destination safely. So we want to keep our lights off from 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. And you can also help by giving them the rest that they need. So when they're flying over, they're, taking a, they're using a lot of effort. So if you provide uh, water, or if you provide uh, bird feeders, it's gonna really help them be able to rest, find the food and care that they need before they take flight again. Another thing you can do is always use natural pesticides. And you can always have a uh, bird friendly coffee. Sometimes the question is, how can I tell if it's bird-friendly coffee? You can actually tell that there will be a label on it from Smithsonian, so the ones that are promoted. So just look for that label and you'll be able to tell if this is a coffee that is friendly enough in which the farmers create a space for the birds um, to rely on while they're making coffee. So most of the birds that are in our Pantanal Savannah aviary, um, they themselves will not migrate. So most of them are kind of just native to that South American region. Um, a couple of the birds we have here are actually partially native to North America though, like our roseate spoonbill and the wood storks. Um, the wood storks are actually the only storks um, at all native to North America. 
Um, and they're kind of like situationally migration, uh, migrational, so they'll kind of migrate uh, depending on the uh, height of the water where they're living slash nesting. That's going to be it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please join us next Wednesday for another Facebook Live. Thanks, guys.